After my video on Dottore being Zandig answered a few questions I had about his past, I still wasn't fully satisfied, as there was another name I didn't mention that I think deserves a deeper look. So for this video we're looking into Shiruya, an exiled prince of Gurubad that would later become known as the Lord of Pestilence. Shiruya's story starts with his grandmother Lilufar, the foremother of spirits. She prophesied that her daughter Shirin would marry a great hero and poison her family to take the throne from her father. Of course it was mostly said in a cryptic manner, like many of Shirin's relatives would enjoy a sweet end, referring to Shirin poisoning their honey at a feast and taking the throne for herself and her husband. Shirin was frustrated with her life as being an elemental spirit meant that she never felt thirst or the satisfaction of luxury, causing her to become resentful towards her father and even her husband Kersa. After they became the new king and queen, Kersa had the servants Shirin used to poison her family submerged into pots of honey as punishment, knowing that Shirin was behind it. They cursed him with their last breaths and his reputation went from that of a hero to that of a tyrant. The last warning Lilufar gave was that Shirin's heir would be an ill omen upon the king's land, and seeing that her prophecies had all come true so far, Kirsa fixated on this, fearing his son Shiria would betray him, as Shirin had betrayed her father. When Shiria grew to adulthood, Kirsa banished him from the royal city of Gurubad, making him wear a brass mask of exile to hide his face and forcing him to flee his hometown on a fast steed. Side note, but this could line up with Dottore asking Piero, will you treat me as my hometown did and chase me away with pitchforks and clubs? As we've only heard of his exile from the academia in any detail so far. Shirin apparently adored Shiria and found Kyrus's fear and cowardice to be the perfect opportunity to take revenge against him. She disguised herself as a priestess of the temple to the moon goddess where the exiled Shiria was resting and gave him a false prophecy that the world was his to rule. All he had to do was end his cowardly father. After a gust of wind blew away the veil she wore to hide her face, Shiria was terrified and fled from the temple his mother seeming to laugh at his fear. Eventually Shiria would return to Gurubad and do as his mother told him to, ending his father in his sleep. Realizing what he had just done, he cried bitterly, but Shirin was pleased and removed his brass mask, giving him an affectionate kiss of benediction. After taking the throne, he was tormented by nightmares until on a frenzied night of wandering he fell into a deep chasm in the earth and disappeared. Later a great plague emerged from that chasm and swallowed up half of the souls in Gurubad. The survivors of this calamity called it Shiria's Plague and he became known as the Lord of Pestilence and this ties in with Dottore's masks. Dottore's Omega build mask and the bird on his shoulder seem to be stylized versions of the Plague Doctor's mask who also appeared in the Commedia dell'arte. Plague Doctors were common around the time of the Bubonic Plague, a pestilence in Europe, and were seen as omens of doom as they often did more harm than good, some being untrained and medical practices at the time being rather extreme tying into the Harbinger's divergence between their Comedia counterparts, such as Child being a smooth talker when his counterpart stutters a lot. Dottore wearing this mask could indicate that he brings plagues or pestilence with him, and we see this with him conducting experiments on Kole and having her injected with Archon residue. It also seems like he wants to weaponize the Withering and Elazar from the notes we discover in the Elazar Hospital, and he laughs at Piero naming him the Doctor, as he finds the irony of the title hilarious. 
His other mask that we see in the manga covers most of his face. I think this could be based on the brass mask that he was forced to wear during his exile, as it looks uncomfortable and covers nearly the entirety of his face, which would hide his identity as the Prince of Gurubad. This Totore seems to be younger than the Omega build and could have been his first creation, representing his time as an exiled prince, as him falling into the abyss doesn't seem to be a long time after his exile ended. Dottore can somehow create different builds of himself, based on different periods in his life, kind of snapshotting himself at a certain point in time. Being from Sumeru, this may link to the ancient Egyptian conception of the soul. It was split into eight parts in the oldest funerary texts, and each of these would become its own spirit after the person passed away. They could also be sent out into the world to support or take revenge against the living. To add to this, during the mummification process, the lungs, liver, intestines, and stomach were removed and placed in canopic jars to preserve them for their owner in the afterlife. I think this was likely the method Totore used. In his case, the jars would be prosthetic bodies, with segments of Dottori's original body placed within. In that case, he would likely have at least four other builds of himself, with the original body keeping the heart, as that was believed to be the seat of the soul. In the same text, the reanimation of a person was possible if the proper rites were followed and offerings were made, but they returned like a roaming ghost, causing nightmares and bringing sickness to the living just like we hear of with Shiria the Lord of Pestilence and Dottore with his experiments. Also, if Shiria didn't survive his time in the Abyss, Shirin could have resurrected him by sacrificing the shepherd she told her stories to, as the last line of Shiria and Shirin is, it was time for the Divine Princess to hold the sacrifice. Removing parts of himself seems like a dangerous task for a human, but if Dottore is Shiruya, then his physiology might be a little different, due to his mother being a genie, allowing him to survive things that a regular human couldn't. If he was resurrected though, maybe his original body isn't fully alive, and he's like a zombie that managed to keep its intelligence, which would make removing parts of himself a trivial matter. As for which one is the original body, the Omega build would make the most sense to me, as he's the one overseeing the experiment on Scaramouche and probably going to take the Dendrognosis, which I think are both important enough for the original Dottore to do it himself. If the Omega build isn't the original though, I'd say he was the leader of the group, and the original is either no longer alive or is being kept alive by some machinery and unable to leave his location. Dottore's name while in the academia was Zandik, and he's described as a young man, which at first doesn't seem to line up with my theory, as Shiria would be a good few hundred, or maybe few thousand years old by this time. This can be explained a few ways though. First, Shirin was described as having an infinite lifespan, like her mother, which points towards this being an inherited trait, similar to Alice and Klee having longer lives and could be that Totore ages at a much slower pace. Second is if Zandig was one of his first builds based on his exiled prince period when he was still a young man, as the time between then and him falling into the abyss wasn't very long, with him being described as a short-lived despot. Third is the blue substance he wears as an earring, which I think represents the pure elemental energy from the Ermansul and Ley Lines. During his time down in the abyss, perhaps he discovered how to use it to create life, similar to Rhindotter, and during his experiments discovered that it could also extend a person's life. I think all three are possible, but if I had to choose, I'd probably say Zandig being his first and physically youngest build would make the most sense, and maybe the one we saw in the manga, due to him wearing the mask I associated with Shiria's brass one. On a surface level, I think he just wants to be free to experiment on the world as he pleases, 
and him joining the Academia was to use their resources, same reason he joined the Fatui. But on a deeper level, I imagine he has some hatred for the gods and Celestia for his terrible fate as a young man. Falling into the abyss seems to have a lasting effect on people too, as we can see with Child's eyes being the only ones in the game with no light within them, and him learning some truths about the world, causing him to basically see it all as a big dream. If Dottore knows the truth of the world that Ermansoul hides, as he mentions in the 3.2 trailer, then it could be that he discovered this after falling into the abyss as Shiruye. To sum up the similarities between the two, both are from Sumeru, are known to wear nearly full face masks, were exiled from their communities, are associated with fatal diseases or pestilence, are described as mad, have ended people close to them when they were vulnerable, have ties to the abyss, and are associated with the city of Gurabad. For things against it, Zandik being called a young man could just be what he was at the time, without secretly being a segment of Dottore. If he was down in the abyss for so long, you'd think that he would have more knowledge on ruin machines and the withering, which seemed to be fairly new discoveries to him as Zandik. It would be strange for him to have two secret past identities revealed in the same patch. He could have discovered the truth of the world from Piero, just like Scaramouche did, and probably a few other things I can't think of right now. So, do I believe Dottore is Shiruye? Well, I'm not sure. The similarities are there, but I found a lot of similarities between Yaimiko and Saigu before Saigu's identity was revealed, so it could be another case like that. I think that it would make for an amazing story though, and would explain why Dottore is so unhinged and sadistic at times, mainly due to the influence of his mother, Shirin, who is apparently still alive. It's also worth mentioning that as far as we know, Shiruye is still alive too, as Shirin says that she lost him to a dark world, likely meaning the Abyss, which we've already had a harbinger fall into and return from with new knowledge and abilities. Let me know what you think in the comments. Do the connections add up to be plausible to you, or is this one a bit too much of a stretch? I'd love to know your thoughts. Thanks for watching, good luck on your wishes, and I hope you have a great day.